Welcome to the next video in the evolution series. This video will be looking at three dot points from the evolution of Australian biota topic, 8.5.23, identify and describe evidence of changing environments in Australia over millions of years, 8.5.24, identify, identify areas within Australia, sorry, that experience significant variations in temperature and water availability, and 8.5.25, Identify changes in the distribution of Australian species as rainforests contracted and sclerophyll communities and grasslands spread as indicated by fossil evidence. So first off, let's have a look at Australia's changing environments. Australia has been moving north since separating from Antarctica, but was never very cold and covered by ice like present day Antarctica about 45 million years ago. Until about 10 million years ago, most of Australia was covered by cool temperate rainforests similar to those now in western parts of Tasmania. Deserts, open grasslands and eucalyptus forests have probably only appeared in the last few million years. Aborigines with their fire stick agriculture have continued to change, sorry, continued this change to open grassland and open forest in the last 50,000 years. A few pockets of remnant, so remaining in inaccessible places such as deep valleys, rainforests have survived these climate changes and white man's axe. Some mountainous areas, especially in Tasmania, show evidence of glacial erosion, indicating that glaciers and ice sheets were once present. Limestone has been found in New South Wales and it is evidence that some areas were once under warm shallow seas. So in particular areas around Janolan Caves is where this giant clam fossil was found in sandstone rock. So as you know, Janolan Caves is a good couple of hours drive from the coastline, but these giant clams obviously were an aquatic organism and found in sandstone that matches areas that are now found where uh, the shallow waters are. We also have ancient beech, a northophagous species of forests that existed in localised regions of Australia um, that were cool temperate forests. These are regarded as remnants from a time when Australia's climate was much cooler and their fossils in Antarctica suggest that Antarctica's climate was once much warmer. So showing that Australia and Antarctica were once joined together. And as they've split, Australia's moved northwards and become warmer and Antarctica's moved southwards and become much cooler than it originally was. Okay, the next stop point that we need to look at is identify areas within Australia that experience significant variations in temperature and water availability. So the average temperatures in Sydney are about uh, between 10 degrees minimum in winter and 28 degrees maximum in summer. Inland regions have a much wider temperature range. So for example, Alice Springs in uh, July has a minimum average of about three degrees with many nights well below zero, below zero and a January maximum average of nearly 40 degrees. So as we can see, this map here shows us the maximum temperature over the last uh, 12 months as we can see, there's a huge variation across Australia. And if we were to have a look at the difference between the minimum and maximum temperatures in these areas as well, we would see that um, although some areas of Australia have very fairly stable temperatures, some areas within Australia also have extreme variations within their temperature. In particular, as we said, Alice Springs and those desert areas, which can drop well below zero at night and have highs in the 40 degrees Celsius range. So what about variation in rainfall, which obviously leads to variation in water availability? So Australia's southeastern corner, so Tasmania, coastal New South Wales and Victoria, has between 1,000 to 2,000 millimetres of rainfall spread evenly throughout the year. However, at the moment, obviously we're suffering from drought, so this has fluctuated a little bit more than normal. Northern Australia, is very strongly affected by tropical monsoon weather. So Darwin, for example, has two seasons, being the wet season and the dry season. The wet season is from November to April with high temperatures, storms and cyclones, very high humidity and floods, which are spread over huge areas of floodplain across Northern Australia. The dry season is from April to October and temperatures are still high with an average daytime temperature in Darwin in July being about 30 degrees Celsius. Rainfall is quite rare, humidity is very low and all but the largest rivers end up drying up. 
this variable environment has selected the organisms that are able to cope with the changes that occur in these particular areas each year. So again, this map shows the average rainfall from August 2015 to July 2015. So we can see the areas within midland, inland Australia don't have great amounts of rainfall. Okay. Uh, however, the northern areas fluctuate, which gives them an overall higher average rainfall than some of these other areas in the same region. And we can see here that our southeastern corner, as mentioned in the previous slide, has probably the highest average rainfalls uh, within the area of Australia. This area up the top here would also be uh, would also experience some of those monsoonal rainfalls similar to those that occur in Northern Territory. So lastly, we need to look at the distribution of Australian species as a result of these environmental changes. So eucalypt fossils show narrow distribution before 5 million years ago, but as Australia has dried out, the adaptations that eucalypts have for surviving fires, such as growth buds under the bark that sprout after the fire, has allowed them to spread across nearly all of Australia. There are eucalypts in nearly all ecosystems in Australia, from snow gum uh, species near Mount Kosciuszko to the river red gums along every creek in inland Australia. Australia only has a few pine trees in rainforests and coastal areas. We've mentioned the Wollamai pine before, so Wollamai pine fossils show it and other pines such as the bunya pine were much wider spread about 20 million years ago. Today, Wollamai pines are only in two deep valleys about 200 kilometres northwest of Sydney and bunya pies, pines sorry, grow in only two small areas of southern Queensland. So obviously over time, the temperature has increased, the areas have dried up and only these particular areas meet the particular needs of these two types of pine species. Banksias are found in Western and Eastern Australia and seem to have been isolated for several millions of years as conditions in South Australia dried out, which caused a genetic isolation between the two populations of Banksia and led to what we know now as divergent evolution. So divergent evolution means that we start with one species and then over time in different environments, we end up with two species that are completely different from one another but have evolved from the original, original one species. And we can see here that we have the Western species, which is now completely different from our Eastern species of Banksia that are found over here. And an, ex an animal example of a species that has changed as a result of the environment is the kangaroo. So kangaroos are so dominant and characteristic of our open grasslands in Australia. However, they do not appear very far back in our fossil records. The earliest fossils are of small muskrat kangaroos, similar to these ones here in this picture, that lived in rainforests about 25 million years ago. So as we can see, their fur is quite dark. They're very little. They have very short legs. So they were able to hide amongst the foliage of the rainforest there. But again, as Australia's moved north, we've dried out the amount of rainforest has decreased, these um, organisms here would have been exposed, so they would have been able to be hunted and killed and the population numbers would have dropped. But again, variations within the population would have meant that some of them would have possibly come out looking like this guy here. Obviously, we wouldn't have just jumped from this to this. But over time, they developed longer limbs, stronger tails, a lighter fur that blended in with the environment and therefore allowed them to get away from predators. They were able to uh, obviously survive to reproductive age and then pass those characteristics on to their offspring. Here we have a picture that you'll be looking at in class that shows over time how the climate has changed and how vegetation has changed as a result from about 30 million or 25 million years ago to now. So we can see here that Australia's climate moved from a moist, warm climate to a cool and dry climate. About 2 million uh, years ago, we had really this big change here with these interglacial and glacial uh, periods where the rainfall oscillated. So it went up and down in almost a perfect uh, peaks and troughs between about 2 million years ago and 50,000 years ago. Okay. Uh, and what we can see here is over that time, 
okay as the rainfall has declined as the temperature has dried out and become colder the number of rainforest species has decreased then we can see so sorry as we can see here these matches with the population of rainforests oscillating almost perfectly in line with the oscillations of our rainfall here we have our introduction of our grassland species happening about uh, 25 to 30,000 years ago where we had a massive decrease in rainforest populations but we had this increase in our grassland populations then 50,000 years ago with the aboriginals arriving in Australia all of a sudden we had a high incidence of fire so as we know the aboriginals use fire in their farming they believe that if you uh, burn a particular area it promotes growth okay so with the introduction of fire we then saw this introduction of fire tolerant sclerophyll uh, trees like our eucalypts who are able to withstand and regrow quite quickly after a fire incident so we can see here about 25 million years ago lots and lots of rainforest vegetation very little uh, fire sensitive sclerophyll very little grassland and no woody uh, sunny, sorry no of the none of the fire tolerant sclerophyll until about 15 million years ago and as we move along we can see how the changing climate has related to those changes in vegetation composition and that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching